Welcome to Fun and Games Side Quests. Every episode is a different host sharing a video game they love and why they love it. Hey, my name is Erin Levine, she, her. I'm a freelance audio engineer and I produce and co-host a tabletop role-playing game podcast called Gameplay Radio with a new game and new guests every week. I'm here to talk about an incredible game called Celeste. Note that there will be story spoilers. This is it, you tell yourself. Your life has been a mess of emotions and chaos. Everything is technically fine, but nothing feels right. You feel like you're at the bottom of the ocean, with no idea which way to go, nothing in sight, nothing you can do. So you try to prove yourself wrong. You try to climb a mountain. Welcome to Celeste, a game where you play as Madeline, a young trans woman in Canada who, in the midst of depression and anxiety, has decided to try climbing a mountain called Celeste in the hopes that she can prove she can do at least one thing right. And then a surprise twist, Celeste is a magic mountain that has the ability to make things in one's psyche physically manifest, including giving a separate body to the part of you that always tells you how much of a failure you are. Enter Badeline, a character Madeline spends the entirety of the game confronting and arguing with and learning about. Celeste is a game about mental health, a game about struggling with the inner self in order to accomplish your goals, or at least accomplish something. This is something that I think everyone deals with in some form or another, but I have never seen a game attempt to address this so directly before and so well, so I think that makes Celeste special. Now is a good time to mention that Celeste is a platformer, and a difficult one at that. I'm usually not someone who goes for platformers. They're typically frustrating with very little reward. Celeste is the one massive exception to that rule. The Celeste creators infuse the game mechanics with story. Every challenge, every pathway, every setup has mental and emotional intent. In Chapter 3, The Celestial Resort... Madeline tries to help the ghostly manager clean up his mess while trying to avoid touching what is revealed to be the toxic manifestations of his own anxiety and self-hatred. In casual gaming, it's everyone's least favorite chapter because the platforming is punishing. But think about it. Isn't it frustrating and sad when you're trying to help someone and you keep being harmed by their hangups in the process? That's what the level is all about. It's supposed to be frustrating. The call is coming from inside the house. And what about Chapter 5, where Madeline has to carry fellow climber Theo, who can't move because he's been trapped in an indestructible container that prevents people from coming close, all while running from horrifying flying fish monsters that came from Madeline's brain and are trying to destroy her. And don't even get me started on Chapter 6, where Madeline is finally reaching out and trying to listen to Madeline, and Madeline puts up every barrier and violence she can think of to prevent Madeline from getting close to her. So, you have to platform on Battleline's moving pillars while she also shoots at you. It's also creative and smart and subtle. I'd never played a game like this before. And the game works hard to make every death, every failed stage not feel like a burden. The consequences are extremely low. You return to the same screen, so there's very little backtracking. If you need to quit and take a break, the game starts you off from right where you left it. The game even reminds you in between levels to be proud of your death count because it means you're learning and growing, which is such an important way to look at failure. The game is hard, yes, but it encourages you to try and fail and keep doing both. Plus, there's the music. The music. I listen to the Celeste soundtrack constantly in my daily life. It was produced by Lena Rain, a composer who was outstandingly talented. Fun fact about the music, there's one chapter of the game where the music has mysterious, incomprehensible whispering in the background. That's Lena's actual voice. She sat in a closet and whispered to a microphone describing her own anxieties and feelings and then flipped it and added it in. Lena truly put her heart into the music. Everyone on the creative team put their hearts into it, and it shows it does. My personal experience with Celeste is honestly kind of roundabout. I first discovered the game in 2018 when a streamer called Messe Anella uploaded her playthrough to YouTube. I was enraptured by the story, but was too intimidated by the platforming levels to play it myself. I still talked about the game to anyone who would listen, because it seemed important. I was 25, and I was about to enter a period in my life I like to call now the growth. 
my theory on the growth is based on the fact that everyone I know in their late 20s has gone through a change, a moment where they find they've outgrown their current life and begin to want more. At 25, I had no idea what this would mean for me, but over the next three years, I would start therapy, I would come out as queer, I would quit my job, and I would start school to enter a new career, all while trying to survive in the middle of a deadly pandemic. Each year, I would listen to the Celeste soundtrack and think about what it was the creators were trying to do by making that game, and how it kept making more and more sense the more I came to terms with my own battle line, and learning how to work with myself instead of against myself. Although I knew the Celeste story by heart and had watched the speedruns and the Let's Plays and listened to the fan-made music albums, I still had never played it. And the more I grew, the more important it felt to me that I needed to experience Celeste for myself. So finally, in 2021, I let myself play. I was scared, sure. I never played a platformer like this. What if I wasn't good? What if it was frustrating or not worth it since I already knew everything that happened? Well, let me tell you, I wasn't good at it. I died over 4,000 times. But there was a rhythm to it I wasn't expecting. A kind of ease in experiencing the emotional highs and lows of being so close to beating a challenge, of knowing what to do before I'm able to do it, of trying again and again and again until, with a breath of relief, I did it. I moved forward. I learned and kept going, and soon it was me and Madeline climbing the mountain together, facing our fears and ourselves and reaching the peak, having grown into new people. It was more satisfying than any Let's Play made it seem. It was wonderful. Now, for those listening who are skilled platformers, there are additional challenges per level. Secret rooms where platforms blink in and out time to special music, and ways to repeat chapters on a higher difficulty level. The physics are incredible in this game, and they allow for some absolutely incredible feats. Just check the speedruns if you don't believe me. But anyway, there's plenty of challenge for you, and I highly recommend you check it out too. You may even learn something about yourself along the way. In 2018, when Celeste won Best Independent Game at the Game Awards, game designer Thorson said, If Celeste has helped you come to terms with mental illness, I just want to say that you deserve credit for that. That change came from inside you, and you're capable of a lot more. All I can say to that, three years later, is thank you, Celeste team, for creating a game with empathy, a game like an outstretched hand to everyone who struggles with themselves and doesn't yet understand why or how to move forward. That's it for my take on Celeste, a game I clearly recommend. Once again, my name is Erin Levine, she, her, I'm on Twitter at Aaron is a bird. That's E R Y N is a bird. On Instagram at Aaron K Levine, and you can find out more about my tabletop gaming podcast on Twitter at Gameplay RFB. So fun to be able to ramble on side quests. So thanks so much to the host for having me, and happy gaming. Hey. Oh, hey, Jeff. What's going on, guys? Oh, you know, talking about Superman. Oh, cool. I could talk about Superman. I could talk some more about Superman. We know. I'll bet a few people would want to get in on this. I'm down. You know it. That sounds like fun. I'll do it. Cool. Let's do it. We can call the show Men of Steel. And you can find it at certainpov.com. Or wherever you get your podcasts. Yay. CPOV. Certainpov.com.